Welcome back to Mind Your Biz. My name is Seth, and we've got another installment of the Creator Highlight Series. And I am so fortunate to have the Bitcoin Queen herself, aka Annalise, aka the creator of house parties, aka the organizer of large scale events, aka the centralizing force of all the fun at all of these activities at so many different conferences, aka. I mean, you you know her, you love her, you wanted to see her on a show like this. Annalise, welcome. Thanks for having me. Pleasure always. Yeah, yeah no, it, uh, it's, it's been a while since we did any media together. I know I think the last time we actually did media, it was in a virtual space, so we weren't actually like talking face to face. Yeah, but, uh, I think so. Would, uh, did you ever do a Crypto Mondays with me? Mondays, no, but I did something. Um, we did a uh, a virtual crypto mining summit i think is what it was and so ah yes yes do you mine yes i do remember that one yeah it's been a little while actually so a lot has happened since then and there's a lot to catch up on with my audience the part of the audience that doesn't know you what i'd love to do annalise is get them caught up on who is annalise in kind of a nutshell or 30 second statement cool so hi guys, I'm Annalise, I'm the Bitcoin Queen. I'm a local Miami staple and event organizer in the space. Uh, I love crypto and I'm here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, yeah, it sums it up really nicely. Um, I think there's also, there's some really great photos circulating as well. I mean, I heard that maybe you are not the assistant manager of the, you know, of, of the infiltration of Charles Hoskinson's lap and maybe the assistant to the manager. That's, that's a brilliant <laughs> photo. Seriously. Like that is, Oh God. <laughs> it's going to be in history books. Resurfacing. It's, it's going to be in history. It's, it's, but it is, it's good. It's just going to live forever. It's funny because, because the, 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 it's a crop, so it's a crop version of the picture that's like circulating. Um, and it's me, Charles Hoskinson and, and crypto finally, Rachel Siegel. And um, literally, it's just like the three of us that got cropped in this photo of 20 other people. There was like, it's like a huge photo. Uh, but yeah, it just so happens that somebody zoomed in on the one part of the picture and like, hey, what's going on there? So, Well, it's just great because I mean, I'm yeah. sure it doesn't tell the accurate story, but it does tell a story, right? No. I mean, there's a narrative there if you want to believe it. So it's just, it's a great photo. I mean, like, I don't, I'm not hating. I'm not like trying to put any spin on it. It's just, um, it just has a cool narrative quality to it that it's like, it's, is it it's, sinister? It's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's great. So anyway, for people who don't know, obviously I've already put that on screen at some point. I'm sure I did. I'm, I'll, I'm sure I have to, or, or we'll link to a Twitter post to it uh, somewhere else, but Something. that's awesome. So, so yeah, you're, you're a force in the space. People who know, know people who don't, um, I mean, um, let's, let's do this. Let's kind of, let's jump back in time to a time before crypto. We were all much more innocent then. Who was Annalise then? I mean, like before Bitcoin queen, which, uh, which I think is actually still kind of a newer, a newer rebrand <laughs> new. It's like two years old. <laughs> like, more or less, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, um, yeah. So beforehand, okay. So now we're going back in. Uh, so I, I mean, I kind of got into uh, crypto basically like in college, like my freshman year. So like before that, I was in high school. Um, but pretty much, uh, I was uh, working for. What was I working for? I was in college working at Starbucks. I was running a Starbucks before crypto. I was a manager at a Starbucks. Um, I had like my own store. I was a barista slash store manager. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've been a hustler since I was like born. Um, I uh, used to sell candy bars at school for money. And uh, I used to work at Chipotle when I was 16. And then after that, I went to, you know, went to school. Um, I was hit by the 2008 recession pretty bad. Uh, my dad got really sick and couldn't work. Uh, his company got foreclosed on. Uh, my mom then shortly after had uh, also health issues. Um, she's, she's much better now, thankfully. But my dad, um, his issue is, is terminal. So he's going to be sick unfortunately, for the rest of his life. So um, yeah, 2008 hit me kind of hard. Um, me and my siblings kind of had to like fend for the family. Like my brother, I remember him turning 16 and immediately going to get a job. And like, I want to be a part of my friends like quinceanera. And like, I had to sell candy bars to like save up for like my dresses. And like, I ended up buying my dress, my shoes, my brother's uh, outfit as well, like just like hustling at school. So um, I've always kind of like known the importance of money and like why these things exist. But I never really liked working or the corporate world. Like I'll work. I'm really good at what I do um, whenever I do need to do it. But uh, what ends up happening is the quality of life kind of dissipates, especially like working in the corporate world, which eventually when I was in college is kind of where I ended up. Uh, I started working for Aetna. I was an insurance agent. I um, wanted to 
go, you know, help the world, save the world. And at the time I thought it was, Hey, I need to be a doctor, right? These are the things that your parents are like, Oh, you got to be a doctor. You got to be a lawyer, all these things. And yeah, I didn't know too much, uh, mostly because I kind of grew up without the internet. Um, I didn't have a cell phone until and a computer until I went out to college. Um, you know, the most internet access I had to was at school. <laughs> so that's like pretty much, I was a very sheltered child. Um, who I guess just grew up fast because I had to. And that kind of propelled me into the world of finance and realizing that a lot of people don't know how to handle their own money. And a lot of people don't get, don't understand how to make choices, um, like real career choices for themselves. They kind of just get pushed into this cookie cutter agenda because um, they don't know any better. And um, I kind of took it upon myself to like, obviously educate myself into what I was getting into, find a better way to become financially savvy and free. And a friend came along and taught me about Bitcoin. And um, that technically wasn't my first exposure to cryptocurrency because back in 2015, I was trying to buy GameCoin with um, uh, someone who I was with at the time. And it didn't fall through. Wells Fargo was like, nope, you can't get this crypto, whatever. Um, exchanges didn't, didn't accept, you know, like cards like that back then. So um, I, I didn't get it initially. But in 2017, when uh, I met uh, a friend of mine, Tim, uh, he basically taught me everything I know. Um, and we started a brand, uh, me, Tim and uh, Jerome. And we started a brand. And from there, I kind of started teaching people as I learned. And that's uh, basically my entry point into all of this uh, wonderful rabbit hole we have created. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, I mean, that that obviously tells the audience a lot. And it's it's kind of funny. Like, like there's there's nobody quite like you, Annalise. If I'm being just very, very straightforward, very blunt, there's nobody quite like you in, in crypto. But there is a common thread or is a common theme of people who just like have a, a kind of like an up, uh, like a, a, a higher level of hustle who gravitate mm -hmm. towards crypto because it's it's like the promise of sales, right? Where it's like, wow, unlimited upside if I if I find it right, if I earn it, um, it's just there right. like I can I can somehow find a way. I'm sure I can find a way. Um, so I've, I've, I'm sure it was just inevitable that at some point you and crypto would have found each other because of that. So that's really cool. Let me um, jump forward in time then after that point when you got started in crypto. I think we met sometime in 2018. Probably, I think the common, I think the crossover point for a lot of people who were coming onto the show early is that we were in Las Vegas in 2018 for World CryptoCon and we watched Bitcoin melt down right after we had partied the night before. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> speaking of growing up fast, right? It's like, oh, you haven't been part of this before in crypto yet, huh? About to learn Everybody fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it hit us by storm. Uh, Halloween night, everyone's going to this this costume party. Next day, Bitcoin says, yeah, I want to die now. Ugh. Like, falls off a cliff. So, uh, <laughs> let's fast forward to today. You've worked on some brands. I know that you've assisted with some NFT launches and been a part of various conventions. And then, of course, just like the more intimate gatherings and stuff, meetups, regular meetups. I mean, this is the stuff where people really get educated, I think. Education, in my opinion, is always personal. And I know that that's where you've been able to excel and find hearts and minds to win. So in your mind, where have been kind of the biggest milestones that you've hit since you've gotten really involved? And uh, and I guess maybe even before that, like, what was the point of no return for you where you were like, okay, there's no way I can ever escape crypto now. Like, I have, I'm, I'm all in. I've got to do this. Like, for the rest of my life, I've got to be involved. Yeah, this is this is actually kind of a crazy story. So um, going back to starting that company with my friends uh, when I first started. So the idea was to create a brand called Bits and Tokens, which was a blockchain media company. Um, and it was supposed to be focused around education and helping people learn and propel them forward in the space, um, as well as uh, assistance with, you know, consultation services. Um, and we actually even helped somebody figure out their seed phrase once, <laughs> which was kind of cool. So they could like get it back to their wallet, which was kind of neat. Um, so I want to say it was like 2018 or 19. Um, we had met someone at a, an event. Uh, it was Tim and Jerome. I wasn't present at the time, but they had met somebody who was a good family friend of uh, a famous comedian. Uh, he's uh, the one that does all the funny noises on TV. Um, oh, God, I forgot his name. He's a African-American male. Um, but 
we basic he basically wanted to uh, hire me and my team to kind of go on tour. And um, I was trying to get leave from work and it wasn't working out. I they wouldn't let me like go. They're like, oh, basically, if you take this much time off, we actually don't need you. And I was like, oh, word. So <laughs> um, at that point in time, I was like, all right, I, I think I think enough is enough. By then, you know, I'd been in crypto for some time. Uh, we, we've been doing decent business um, together, you know, like me and my team. And I was like, you know, maybe maybe I should focus on this full time. So I put in my two weeks <laughs> and I never looked back. Uh, and that was the end of it. And um, I mean, probably within like a year, uh, it, we didn't. So the guy back back to this guy that we we're supposed to go on tour with, and it actually never happened because he got ill and admitted into a hospital and never did the tour. <laughs> so wow. that completely went down the toilet. So you're saying um, there may, so there may or may time, not have been a drug problem. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure people age, you know, they it, mental health is is more than uh, drugs. Sometimes it's it's because, you know, especially I feel what, what I see with a lot of celebrities is they wear themselves out, um, whether it's drugs or not, just like mentally and emotionally, and they break down. Um, and then sometimes it's you know, even family or agents that you have around you that are kind of like, you know, taking money where they shouldn't. And you feel you you feel emotionally strained. It's like, hey, I was supposed to make a million dollars. And out of nowhere, that's that turns into like, you know, 100,000 because everybody's taking a piece. And, um, you know, that's that's what happens when you're part of the wheel. Right. So I don't I don't know exactly what happened. I don't want to say anything ill about anyone, but. Um, yeah, every, everything kind of just went down the drain. And then, um, I was kind of just like, you know, oh snap, <laughs> uh, reality hit. Uh, I quit my corporate job that, you know, it was a <laughs> six figure job. It, I was doing pretty decent. I was 21 years old making six figures. Okay. So, you know, just, just to put in perspective and I just, you know, I was just like, all right, I'm done. It was, it was like, physically it was miserable. Um, but after that, uh, I kind of just went, you know, full in really hard, started, uh, focusing on learning how to do marketing and events. And um, I mean, I can do anything from like live streams to podcasts to all the in between in terms of video production and video editing. I started hosting conferences, um, hosting events, uh, doing stuff in VR and in real life and kind of just started implementing myself as like a staple here in like the local Miami community. And, you know, making friends, making uh, people who I can grow and scale with. And, you know, we would all make it together in the long run. Um, that's what I started focusing on. And, um, you know, at time after time, uh, between, you know, like learning anything from like solidity down the drain, uh, you know, OPSEC, everything, I kind of just started doing it all. And um, yeah, I have basically kind of cultivated myself to be a all around, you know, crypto knowledgeable individual from the tech to the basic education, to the importance, to the, you know, actual life implementation. Um, I do have a focus on uh, media and education. I actually now have a show in, that streams across Latin America. It's on uh, Univista TV. It's called the Big, uh, El Bitcoin Daily Show. I do it with uh, myself and my co-host, Jay, who started the original um, Bitcoin Daily brand um, in English here in the U.S. And uh, now we're on Spanish television somehow. So it's cool. And um, yeah, I do crypto Mondays. I help uh, companies like CoinFund uh, and uh, ETH Miami run events um, all the time. Uh, it, the list goes on and on. I kind of just have fun at this rate and um, living my best life in cryptocurrency. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I mean, that that's kind of a thorough rundown. Let me ask you, if you could distill it down to like your favorite, maybe, you know, top three or maybe even just top like like top achievement the thing that really makes mm -hmm. you proud like it's something maybe something that nobody else would understand but it's just like for you really personally gratifying what would that big achievement or milestone be big achievement or milestone let me see so i hated hated i didn't hate math i was really good with statistics and and um geometry i sucked at algebra like so hard i took one class in high school that was like kind of coding, but it was like straight algebra. It was like, if this, then that, and then you have to like multiply all this stuff. And I just sucked at it. Like at the beginning it was okay. And at the end I was just like, all right, I'm barely passing this class with a D. So 
Um, to go from that to actually start to like learn like real coding languages, like that was a big achievement for me. Cause like, I always thought like, Hey, I can't do tech. I don't understand tech. Tech's not for me because it's just a bunch of math. Cause that's what I was fed. Right. That's what we were told. Um, but being able to understand, read and even break down and like, understand like what's going on in a smart contract. Like I'm really proud of that. Um, I'm proud of hosting my own conference and throwing my own conference. Uh, that, that was really cool, cool doing that for the first time. It was exhausting. I did not sleep, but, uh, I'm here now and, you know, we've learned a lot since then. Um, a third thing, just, just being, just being financially independent and, um, being able to help out my family when I can and not needing to, you know, go out there and get a job that, that kind of like means a lot. Um, Cause it's, it's like, I have the luxury, like, like, yes, it's like, I quit my job nine to five to work in crypto 24 seven, you know, you do like, <laughs> right. your schedule's yeah. all over the place now. But the, the fact of the matter is, it's not like I have to get up and drive somewhere at 9am and respond to some boss. And like, I can work with companies and brands at my leisure, um, which is what I do best. I, I'm really good at, you know, s scaling things and, uh, I learned over the years, instead of, you know, being pushed and fed by my parents, hey, you must do this. It's like I found something that I really like. And um, between creating content, um, marketing, education, all the in between, it's it's what I love. So pretty much that. And DeFi. Who doesn't love DeFi? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, right. Right. Especially. I mean, uh, are, what are we on? For, which version? DeFi 3.0? We're going to get to the, the second layers after. Is it, do we have to wait well, for like. swaps on their V3. Um, yeah, Uniswap's on their V3 curve with, I mean, they, I guess they got a new interface, but I, I feel like they're going back in time every time they update it. Uh, for the longest, it was like, oh, they're in the nineties. Then they got their front end hack the other day. Now they're in like the, like 89. It's like, okay, that looks a little yeah. worse than the last one. Yeah. But uh, thankfully, hey, yeah. I guess if it works, <laughs> if it works. Right, right. Well, Annalise, I really appreciate you spending some time with me and going over your history in, uh, in the crypto industry. Um, is there something I should have asked you that I didn't ask? Hmm. I don't know. It's my favorite color. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> ah, I was gonna say, if, yeah, dollars to donuts is the color of the shirt you're wearing. I appreciate you spending the time with me, though. I appreciate you setting the record straight on the favorite color thing, because man, I was lost there. And uh, appreciate you, of course, just doing what you do. Seriously, um, like. The reason I was did that I started to do this creator highlight series, and in your case, it's far more than just being a creator. It's an educator, and in in every possible way, right? Large scale, one to many events, etc. Um, so I don't mean to like make it sound trivial, but I started to do this this little series because you know a lot of people are thinking you know I, I, the economy's looking not so great, and I don't know if I can make I can justify my entry into crypto. I don't know if it makes sense for me. And you know, you're you're one of those who is you're making it. You're you're gonna make it. It's just gonna be all right. Yeah, you know what, guys, you're gonna make it um, one step at a time, right? Like, don't don't chew more than you can eat. One step at a time. Little, if you got five bucks a week to spare, throw it in Bitcoin. You know, like that's that's all it takes. That's how I started. And uh, even when I was not like COVID, COVID basically killed um, bits and tokens for the most part. And like literally it was me and my two coworkers or two partners at the time, like we were just all living together, figuring it, the, figuring out, you know, like we'll figure it out. And, you know, it's sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes you have to break to rise and that's okay too. Awesome. Well, Annalise, I appreciate your time. And uh, and I, I think I think I, it's definitely probably over time that we do some kind of a collab in a more meaningful way for some educational stuff. But appreciate you spending some time. And uh, audience, we will uh, we'll be back with another creator very, very soon. Thanks so much.